Hey YouTube, Kevin Cleary with a knife video for you. Today I've got a knife that I would suspect, even if you're not familiar with this particular model, which is the Doc Brown, you probably are somewhat familiar with Quartermaster, and I say that for a couple of reasons. Number one, they tend to have designs that really stand out. Uh, they have been sort of an up-and-comer recently, so you've been seeing them on, you know, SHOT Show videos and featured on different uh, major knife retailers, channels, and stuff like that. So, um, even if you haven't heard of this particular knife, you've probably heard of Quartermaster, and certainly I had heard of Quartermaster and wanted to try out something from them. So I was pretty uh, glad to be able to do that. This is the Emmett Doc Brown, and it is the all-black version. There is sort of a, a more black-washed version that they call the Texas Toast or something like that. Anyway, um, kind of been interested in Quartermaster and wanted to, to try out something that they had done. Now, uh, I looked at a lot of their designs, and here's what I will say about their designs. I think they're the kind of designs where people are going to say, yeah, that's awesome, or they're going to totally hate it. Okay, so uh, that's certainly the way I feel about some of their blades. I just find some of them are totally ugly, and others I'm like, hey, that's a pretty cool looking blade. And certainly this was the one out of all of them that I was most interested in. And I'm not saying I'll never try another Quartermaster, uh, but this was the main one that I was most interested in because of the, the size, the blade shape, uh, the size and weight on this is also very, very good. So for all those reasons, I went ahead and picked up this knife. And so now I've been using it for a while and had some time on it uh, and wanted to go ahead and tell you a little bit about it. Now, the other thing I will say, you know, there has been some discussion about quality control and fit and finish from Quartermaster. And this knife did have up and down blade play pretty badly when I first got it. Now it ha doesn't have it. Uh, I did have to send it back to Quartermaster and they fixed it for me. But I will say this, um, unlike other companies where I've sent knives before and you just have no idea where is it, what are you doing to it, nothing like that, Quartermaster was actually quite good to say, hey, we got your knife, we're working on it, should be a day or two before we ship it back out, that kind of thing. Um, and I really appreciate a little extra communication on the part of the company. That was, that was pretty cool, I thought. Uh, now, let's get into the specifics because uh, there are some things that really stand out about this knife that I want to tell you about and some things that uh, are going to be, you know, maybe a little different. So size and weight on this, 8 and 3 eighths inches overall. So 8 and 3 eighths inches, which is a pretty nice size for EDC. You, know, you guys know how I feel about that. I like to see knives that are around 8 and a half inches. And I mean 8 and 3 eighths, pretty darn close, right? Uh, 3 and um, 5 eighths blade length, which is very good for a knife of this size. Okay, normally in a knife that's under 8 inches, or I mean under 8 and a half inches, uh, you're getting less than a three and a half inch blade. So three and five eighths is very, very good. Uh, and you're only losing an eighth of an inch, not even an eighth for cutting edge. So you're getting most of that blade length is translated directly into cutting edge, which again is a real win. The handle length on this is only four and seven eighths, basically. It's maybe a fraction of an inch under that. Uh, so almost five inches. Now, the size the, the length on this is very good for its size. If you look, you can see that this knife folds down to a very compact size in pocket. Uh, it only weighs 4.6 ounces. So, uh, for its size and for its construction, which is titanium frame lock, this knife is incredibly lightweight. And I've got to tell you, I'm very, very impressed with that particular aspect of the knife. It's really, really cool to see a knife uh, that's in a titanium frame lock that allows you to carry something different, something high-end. I definitely think this qualifies as a high-end carry blade, um, but it only comes in at 4.6 ounces, which is very, very good. Now, let me throw up some comparisons so you get a good sense for what that 4.6 ounces looks like. And I've got a couple of ZTs here because I kind of feel like Quartermaster is in that same range. You know, it's around 200 bucks for most of their knives and their titanium frame locks. They're trying to be sort of high-end but affordable and uh, ZT has sort of got that segment of the market really well covered. So there's a my 0560. Totally, totally phenomenal blade. I'm a really big fan of the 0560. You can see that it's quite a bit bigger than this knife. Now a knife that's more similar in size, although just a teeny bit shorter, 
is 0.562. Okay. Obviously, this is a more traditional blade. It's more standard looking. Probably uh, the average knife person or the average buyer is going to be maybe a little more drawn to this because of its more traditional styling over uh, this very you know angular, somewhat different uh, kind of Quaken inspired blade shape. Uh, now, I will offer this as another comparison. The reason I bring in this is because this was the knife that convinced me to like Warren Clips. Up to this point, um, I had not really been willing to try one, but you know, something just appealed to me about this knife, and I still wasn't sure, but I tried it and loved it. Okay, so I really, really like this knife, and because of that, I've been willing to try some other sort of Warren Clips style blades, including this one. All right, obviously the price point on this is quite a bit less, uh, but you do have that straight Warren Cliff blade shape. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to offer as an example, not because um, there's a lot in common, but because of the fairly angular sort of styling on the um, SOG Zoom, it, it has that same flavor where it's angles and it's sharp edges and square edges, okay? And so the SOG Zoom uh, the other thing is, if you've tried a, uh, a Tanto style blade before, then you're at least used to just the primary cutting edge just being straight. Obviously, you've got the secondary edge on a Tanto where you don't on a Warncliffe blade, but uh, that does at least let you have an idea of what you think about that. So those are some comparisons for you. Uh, obviously, most of those are a little more traditional, and for that reason, some of them may be more uh, appealing to you than a knife like this, which certainly has a different look and feel to it, okay? Now that's one of the things to me that really appealed about it was that it's a little different than what you're used to seeing. So let's get into the specifics and start out with the blade. Uh, this is uh, obviously a Warncliffe style blade. It is a flat grind and you could say a high flat grind because there's not a lot of blade here. But the reality is this is going to perform like a fairly low angled flat ground blade. You know, you think that most knives would be about this thick and that would mean that your grind angle is starting way down here. Let's see if I can get this to catch the light better. There we go. So the grind angle is starting down here. All right. And that means you don't have a, a lot of distance to cover. Now that necessitates, okay, a fairly steep. You can't do this kind of an angle. You don't have enough room. You've got to have something more like this and I'm exaggerating these angles on purpose so you can see what I'm talking about. But you do have to have something more like this in order to, to get this down to a cutting angle. There's not a lot of distance here. All right. Now that does mean you've got a pretty steep wedge when you're doing cutting tasks with this. Now for EDC tasks, that's not really a problem. Let me try and... No, not zoom out. Let me try and zoom in a little bit so I can show you this blade in a little more detail. There we go. Okay, so you can see uh, that fairly short distance that's available for that grind, which means, as I've said, if I turn the knife this way, you have a fairly steep, or I mean a fairly wide wedge shape there. Now that means that for certain tasks where you're moving through a lot of material, you could get a little bit of a uh, you have to put. You might have to put a little more pressure on that knife to move it through. And now I've done. You know, I've talked about be cheese being one of the worst, and so I did cut up some cheese with this, and pretty much got the reaction I expected. You know, the cheese really has to be peeled apart, and although it would cut it because the the actual cutting edge is fairly thin, um, there's still quite a bit of of separation that has to happen as you make a cut. Okay, cardboard, stuff like that, you're probably not going to notice it as much because it's a, it's a more, um, it's a tougher material, so you're going to push this through cardboard and you're not going to notice quite as much. At least I didn't notice that much difference. That's also contributed to by the fact that there's not a lot of blade here. So there's not a lot of space for sort of friction to build up, but you are forcing that opening that you're creating as you cut to be pushed open really, really quickly. All right. Now, otherwise, extremely utilitarian. You've got a very, very sharp point here. You've got lots of blade length. So very, very useful blade for most 
every EDC task that I try doing with it. It is a tough, well-made knife, again. Now, the other thing that you're gonna get with this Warncliffe style blade is a very, very sharp point, which means a penetrating cut is going to be extremely easy. This is a very, very slim blade design, and it would stab into just about anything quite easily. Now, the one thing I have to say about that, let me come back just a bit. There we go. Um, when I hold the knife, notice in a natural grip, if, my, if I'm cutting on a, sur a surface, this knife does not do well on a surface. Your fingers right away get in the way. If you angle it down, you're pretty much only going to be cutting with this last portion of the blade. So any, any job where you're cutting on a table or on a cutting board, I don't find this knife great for. But my, my EDC knife that's in my pocket, I don't usually use it for that kind of a job anyway. And, you know, I've got kitchen knives that I use for that kind of kitchen work type stuff. Okay, so there you go. That's my discussion of the blade. The steel, by the way, is very, very good. Uh, CPM 154 is exceptional. It's, it's essentially 154 CM, only made with a powdered metallurgy process, which means you have a, a higher grade, uh, which, which gives you a better finishing steel, a more consistent type of steel, and, and very, very hard and tough, good, good steel on this knife. Which, by the way, was one of the, you know, one of the features that, that drew me to it was a very good blade steel. Let's move on and talk about lockup and deployment. It is a titanium frame lock. It does have a lock bar insert, which also serves as an over travel stop. It's pretty hard to show you, but um, the bottom of the lock bar insert does have a little tab that comes back so that I can't hyperextend this lock bar, okay? Flipping action is fairly good. Now, right, let me say this. The blade here, and, and if I show it to you, you can see there's not a lot of steel in this blade. It's thin. It's deeply ground, so you don't end up with a lot of steel, which means you don't have a lot of weight. So, that means very little inertia. So when you're flipping the knife open, um, it's not a knife that you kind of get started and then the inertia of the blade carries it out. An example of a knife that does do that would be like the Zero Tolerance uh, 0452. Um, yeah, 0452, 0454 maybe is what I'm thinking of. Uh, those are knives where the, there's a lot of weight. And here's another good example. Like, you know, once once the detent breaks on this knife, you've got a lot of steel here. And so once you break the detent, this thing is going to open just because of the inertia of the blade itself. This knife, because the blade doesn't have that much mass, you're not getting the same amount of inertia. And so you've got to, when you flip this open, you've got to flip it with a bit of intentionality. Okay. Um, let's see. This knife is a good example where it's almost difficult if you just barely apply enough pressure to break the detent, it opens. Okay. This knife, if you just apply enough pressure to break the detent, see how it doesn't open all the way? And I'm being super, super gentle with that. Um, if you flip the way you normally flip, it comes out no problem. You just have to be, as I said, a little intentional about flipping this knife open. And that's largely because of the very light blade. Uh, it is a fairly smooth pivot. Now again, because the blade is light, it's a little harder to get this to work right, but the blade will fall closed under its own weight. It's just that there's not a lot of weight there. So it's smooth. It's not that it isn't smooth. It's just that there's not a lot of mass. Okay. Uh, lock interface is quite good. Uh, fairly standard fare in all of that. Uh, it is a ball bearing pivot, by the way. Uh, and the lockup is very secure. Don't have any issues. Okay, so there you go. Uh, overall, uh, lockup and deployment is good, and it's one of those knives you probably have to get used to just a little bit before you uh, find that you're you're totally happy and comfortable with it. Okay, so let's see. Lockup and deployment. We've talked about that. Uh, it is very comfortable to actually, and one of the things they've done here that you don't always see is the lock bar insert is actually the piece that it doesn't it extends on the back. It also extends a bit on the front and has some jimping on it to allow you to access that liner and push it over, okay? So, uh, that's lockup and deployment. What about the handle? The handle on this is very simple. You know, you got a couple little choils here. They're not deep, they're not exaggerated. Makes it very, very comfortable in hand. It's essentially just a stick, 
and other com other you reviewers have pointed out that a stick is a pretty natural thing to hold on to and this is very very simple uh, the edges are nice and rounded so they're not too difficult to deal with okay uh, very very comfortable knife overall and definitely one that I I don't have any complaints about ergonomics on this in any way even the uh, even the jimping on here there would be the potential and I was kind of worried that this would be the case there's the jimping on the flipper is perfect it just catches your finger enough but sometimes when there's jimping there you can get some rubbing on this front finger not at all uh, I did not have any issues with that the jimping on the back of the blade is very, very large uh, and quite functional as well so ergos on this are very good I should point out that the um, pocket clip is right side tip up carry only and there's no lanyard hole at all uh, all there is here is a backspacer that has sort of a gear pattern on it I do really like the backspacer and it's actually quite comfortable in sort of a reverse grip or even in a draw cutting grip like this uh, very very comfortable handle for all of those and the handle construction is cool in that it's kind of minimalist you've just got the backspacer and the pivot and nothing else okay so pretty cool blade uh, all around what I would say is this quartermaster is cool because they're willing to do some stuff that is really different and you know they must know that this is not going to appeal to a wide audience but in order to sort of have their own personality and have knives that are doing something different they're going ahead and, and kind of really thinking outside the box they've got knives with weird handle shapes on them and just doing all kinds of strange things um, not all of them appeal to me but I will say good on Quartermaster for being willing to make those knives that look quite a bit different than what you were used to. And if they weren't doing some of those things, I don't think they would have come up with a design like this, which I actually do really like. It's just very straight and slim and cool. And it gives me an opportunity to carry a more high-end blade while not sacrificing or not putting up with a lot of weight. You know, I love this knife. Uh, I carry it an awful lot, but it's it's a little heavy, okay? Uh, here you're getting a lot of the same, you know, titanium frame lock, high-end features, but the weight on this is only 4.6 ounces, which is very, very good, okay? So, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the, the video, and we'll see you on the next one.